Hello from Arizona. My name is Calvin. I welcome you to Tough Trails. Okay, so in this episode, this is part six of our affordable off-road series. And what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about all the upgrades and modifications and improvements that you can do to your GeoTracker or Suzuki Sidekick if you have one already or maybe you're going to get one in the future. So we're going to talk about exterior components and exterior accessories and the custom work that you can do on the outside and some repairs and some modifications. And then we're going to talk about the inside as well and what you can do there. We're going to show you examples of everything that we've done and everything that we've done. We've got a video on it. We've already made a video on it somewhere. So if there's something that you like or something that you see that you want to get a little bit more detail on, just watch this episode and then go search the channel. There's tons of stuff on that channel. I'm sure you'll find something that will benefit you. So without anything further, let's just get this program going. Let's get it going. When it comes to fixing up uh, vehicles and old cars and stuff like that, one of the first things that anybody does is they look at the wheels and tires. They want to upgrade. That's usually the first upgrade is wheels and tires. But one of the issues here is that you want a bigger tire. You want a taller tire. You want an aggressive tread pattern. Well, you're going to have to go with a larger size tire than what comes on these things stock. You may even need to get some different wheels as well to, to handle the different size or width of the new tires. So because of the limited room that you have in your fender wells in here, uh, to put larger tires on, you're going to need some additional wheel clearance before you can consider any kind of wheels. And so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to lift your, your, lift your, your vehicle up. You're going to have to do a lift kit on it. And as you can see here, this is the back, and it's just got a single shock and a coil spring with trailing arms. That's it. This is very simple, standard um, suspension system. So let's look at the front. And here, and here, as you can see, it's a strut system with a coil spring. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to lift this. So you're going to have to determine how much tire you want. And that's going to tell you how much lift you're going to need. So generally speaking, for a Suzuki Sidekick and a Geo Tracker, there are several options. Now, you have a couple options here. In order to save money, one of the things that a lot of people opt for is to use the same wheels and just get bigger tires. For example, these. These are 31 inch tall tires and they're a 10.5 width. They're a 15. Save money. We just got some, some tires. We went to the, maybe we went to the used tire shop. Maybe we found them on Craigslist or some of that Facebook marketplace stuff. So, and we just use our stock wheels and tires. Now, in this case, what we did here, what you can tell is there's a two inch spacer on this bad boy. See that? So we didn't have to buy the wheels. We just went with spacers and a tire. You know, or maybe you want to go bigger, like these bad boys. This is a 33, 12, 5, 15. As you can see, these are aftermarket rims. These are 10 inch wide rims. They're 15 inch, okay? No spacers involved, no spacers required here. But to get this kind of tire on here, you've got to have this kind of lift. So, even though we're still trying to get tires, we're going to have to keep chasing lifts now before we can figure out our tires. So, let's talk about that next. All right, so now when it comes to suspension systems, you've got several choices. If you have a GeoTracker, Suzuki Sidekick, there are quite a few choices, okay? What you can do is you can opt for a very expensive setup like this. This is a Calmini 3-inch articulation system. It retails for just under $1,000. It's probably gonna cost you another grand to $1,500 just to get it installed. And this is gonna give you three more inches of lift and thusly adding to your clearance. See, give you more clearance up there in your fender wells so you can house those big tires that you want. Now, a more practical and less expensive way to do it is to get what they call a budget suspension lift, which basically includes a two inch puck. So this puck goes on top of your strut, extending its travel, and then the other puck goes right down here on top of your spring. You see that? And it goes on all four corners, okay? And that's two inches. That's going to get you up two inches, okay? But if you want a bigger tire, that's really not enough. Then what you're going to have to do is a body lift. You see right there, you see that block? That's what a two inch body lift looks like. Or there's these two inch spacers. It's just a two by two piece of uh, square tubing 
cut into two inch pieces, holes drill through them, and mount it, and that lifts your body up. So that costs you about a hundred bucks. This puck system right here, the budget lift, about another hundred bucks. Now prices vary, you know, depending on where you're at and what you're looking for, and it has a lot of fancy kits and stuff, so you have to decide. But that's gonna give you a significant amount of fender clearance or wheel clearance right here. So this vehicle right here is up about five inches. So, and that's a two inch puck and a two inch body lift. But because your springs and your struts are still new and good, you, see, you always seem to get that extra inch squeeze out of it somewhere. But as you can see here, there's plenty of room, okay? One thing I'm gonna have to point out for you if you're not seeing it yet, is notice here, this fender had to be modified because at some point, this didn't have the 31s like it has now, but it had 33s on it. And those 33s, you're gonna have to cut this a little bit. A lot of people don't wanna do that, so you gotta consider the options. And you can see the body lift down here. See it there, how that works. There's your puck right there on top of your strut, and there's your puck on top of your spring. So, there's another look at a body lift and a rear suspension puck right there. See those? Okay. And here's another option. So in this option, this vehicle has a body lift. Let's see if I can get you down in there. You can see it. There's a body lift right there. And there's some pucks. We've got the spacer on the puck. See, it's red right there. Okay. But if you notice up here, this strut does not have a two-inch spacer on it. And the reason for that is this is an aftermarket strut. So I went with a larger strut off of a heavier vehicle. In this case, I believe it was a 93 Pontiac Grand Prix. So that's gonna get you some clearance. But there's still yet another way. And that's here. See, what we've done here is we've actually cut the fenders out. So we've taken these fenders and cut them all the way up to this body line right here. See it there? We'll look over here in the back. Same thing. See, here's your body line. See it? So we cut those fenders out. A lot of people don't want to do that. They frown on that. But that's what was required. And in the rear here, what we did is we put shocks on from a Ford F-150 pickup. It gives me a longer travel and I can carry more weight. So that's what we did on this one. So that's another option for you. And then this modification allows for us to put our big 33, 12, 5, 15s on there, all aftermarket. Look how they fit and look how they look. Awesome. See that? Okay. Once you figured out your wheels and tires, your particular lifts or modifying fenders or aftermarket suspension systems, what a lot of people would do next in fixing up their Geo Tracker Suzuki Sidekick, you're going to go to the bumper, okay? And they're going to modify their bumpers and they're going to put some kind of a off-road bumper on there. And in a lot of cases, they're putting a winch on, like we have done here. Now in this case, this is just old weld casing. It's four and a half inch diameter pipe. That's what it is. It's got a 332nd wall thickness. It's plenty strong. It's been modified to hold its mount. Okay? And that's how we did it on this one. And as you can see, on this one, it's the same in the back. Okay? There we go. We just mounted those on there, just like that. Okay? And here's another option. On this one, when you take the skin off, the plastic cover off of your GeoTrack or Suzuki Sidekick front and rear bumpers, you're gonna have a metal bumper underneath it. It looks just like this. Now this one was repositioned up two inches to accommodate for the two inch body lift. That way it lines up real nice, okay? So that's an option. That could just be your bumper right there, okay? Now in the rear, what you're gonna see, this is actually a front bumper. This is a front bumper I had laying around and I modified it because I wanted it up in there tight. I, I don't like the, the big bumpers. My particular type of off-roading is I'm in and out of steep washes a lot of times, so I can't get hung up. So, and on this one, as you can see, I even modified and put me a receiver in for a hitch. See that? Okay. Or as you see here, you can just elect to keep your same bumper. This is what a rear bumper looks like when you take the skin off of it. It's not burnt copper or twisted copper like this one is, because that's what we painted, but it could go like that. And see here, this is another version of a front bumper with the plastic bumper cover removed. Again, this one was painted twisted copper. And here's another option still. If you're handy with a welder or something, you'd be able to make your own bumpers. As you can see, this is nothing more than a two by three inch uh, piece of uh, steel. That's it. 
and we trim the edges off of it, welded them up, grinded them down, put us a, a receiver hitch in there, and we're good to go. And if you see here, if you want to use the same bumper and you're going to move it up and you're going to cut it off, but you want to put a winch on it, look, it, there's even ways to do that. This winch is mounted underneath with a cradle. If you can see up in there a little bit, see it? So, and that's it. So you could do that. And that'll solve your bumper problems. Next on our fix them up list is lighting. So once we figure out our wheels and tires, our body lifts, our bumpers, whether we want winches or not, Normally what follows that is off-road lighting. And here you have a 42 inch curved light bar. I prefer these. Most of mine have these on them. These are the kinds that I like, but it's not your only option. And see, so here's even another option that you could go for. I always, I'm an older guy and we used to have these, what we, a company called KC, we had KC lights a lot, but they were halogen lights. These right here are actually LEDs, bright as crazy. Now. These were actually, when I bought them, they were yellow. And I found these for um, like utility vehicles, emergency vehicles, uh, those kinds of things. And I took them apart and I just matched them up to our paint colors that we wanted. And we could use those. And there are still others that I don't have here that, that you could use as well. But these are just more options for lighting, you know? And here's yet another one, 42 inch curved light bar. Like I said, these are the ones I like the best. Okay, cool. And for the convertible and the hard tops, another option that you could have is you can make your own diamond plate target top. You can even do that and add that on there. And that way, if you wanted to go convertible, you can go convertible with the top off. See that? Yeah. And then finally, there's another one. Another 42 inch light bar, which brings us to the next stage, okay? Once we've got our lift, our wheels, and our tires, our bumpers, our winches, What's popular nowadays are these roof racks, as you can see here. Now this is a full length roof rack, and this is on a tin top, okay? But those are becoming really popular. And if you notice here, this has exterior rear reverse lighting as well. So, so that would be another option that you could do, okay? And here's another one. So now this one is a shorty. Now this one, we got it because we had a big, um, a big tent that fit right here and strapped down at the end. So we needed this space right here. But I actually have the extension for this and I'm going at a later date, I'm gonna take this one apart and I'm gonna extend it all the way to the full length of the vehicle. Okay, so there's another option. And then while we're on the outside of the exterior of the vehicle, another thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is paint. Because if we're messing with one of these right now, and it's got any kind of sun, and they're over 30 years old, you know, so um, the paint's probably faded and worn, shine's probably gone. But you're planning on some uh, off-road stuff. And uh, for me, in my particular case, I'm in and out of washes a lot. Like you, you've heard me mention washes a lot. I use the washes as a highway, so I can get to anywhere I need to go with the different chains of washes out here. That's how I do it. So. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to paint. Well, now this is actually a rattle cam paint job. And these are flat colors. I usually use flat colors because once they get scraped and scratched up, you just get your paint again and you touch it back up and it keeps it looking good if that's your thing, okay? Now this one happens to be a hard top, so we two-toned it. And this is a, uh, let me see what that was called, charcoal gray. There we go, charcoal gray. And this one also has a target top on it, see that? And it's target and it's also charcoal gray and they both were clear coated where this right here is just a desert khaki color out of a rattle can and that's it and that's how we did it okay and it was very inexpensive and it looks kind of good and it's easy to maintain you can maintain this nice and easy now if you wanted you could actually clear over this if you want to protect it but the thing is for me i go through so many changes this this vehicle itself right here has probably morphed at least four times. When we first got this one, not that I'm harping on this, but when we first got this one, this whole driver's side was caved in. It was in a wreck. This fender was, had to be replaced. This door had to be replaced. I had to pull this and it's not perfect. You see down here, it's not perfect, but I'm going out in the desert. I don't care. But this right here, this rocker panel was actually pushed up almost against the frame. So fortunately the frame wasn't broken, 
or bent or damaged so that's why we saved it and we pulled that floor out and we cut a bunch of stuff and welded a bunch of stuff and got a door to close and and that's how we got it so okay now this one right here is also a rattle cam paint job the difference is is that this is a metal flake paint and it has been clear coated and that's why you just have a little shine on it now this is not something i normally do the reason that we did this one is because we try to do everything for that that that, that guy that do-it-yourselfer guy the guy at home with his garage and he may not have an air compressor so if you had an air compressor or access to an air compressor you could borrow or rent and a paint gun i would recommend just doing a paint gun it's a lot easier and a lot faster and it's probably a lot cheaper too so but this is just another example of what you can do with some rattle can so i'm going to take this one out and it's going to get all scratched the hell up and i'm not going to like it <laughs> i'm not going to repaint it and re clear it and i'm just going to get me some flat color like a flat green or khaki or sand or black and that's what we'll go with so anyway there's another option or another option is we just leave it the damn color that it already came with okay not mess with it at all how about that or still another one see this one is actually a six-year-old rattle can paint job so it took six years to get like this and maybe it's odd but i might just wet sand this and clear coat it that's a different look you can't repeat this you're not gonna be able to repeat this in a shop somewhere so it's not really a patina but it's a rattle can patina that's what it is just clear coat it will be good okay so now once you got your outside looking the way you want it to look let's lift it up you got your tires time to move to the inside now on the inside again parts for these things are just not that expensive these seat covers you know a lot of people are going to put seat covers on here because these seats are 30 to 35 years old now you know there may be a tear there may be a rip or you may want to protect them but i will point out that these seats and the geo tracker and the suzuki sidekicks the guitars etc are such a good quality seat they're still firm they're still solid after all of these years put seat covers on them save them 20 bucks okay cool little steering wheel you know maybe 30 40 bucks put on there you know modify your stereo system that kind of thing or hey look cool red door handles Who, who's got that nobody's got that i got that look at these door panels make custom door panels notice they've been painted on the inside too even the jams were painted okay things were taken apart and painted these are snap together vehicles super easy and i, I will point out if there is a father daughter father son or mother daughter mother son kind of a project idea that you need this is it right here build a car with your kid that's what we used to do in the old days that's what got me the bug is somebody took me aside and showed me how to work on cars pass the favor along and teach somebody else okay this is what your target top looks like on the inside that's aluminum it's brushed like that look at this we added a a cargo net back here uh oh look at that we put some speakers in we put a gun rack in we put a utility cargo box in there look at that are those traction boards oh my god what would we think of next you know so we're moving to the inside look at cool floor plans or floor plans floor mats you know took the consoles out painted them up just a couple screws holding them in that's all it is there's nothing to it you know box right here we we'll put a mat on there cheap you know amazon 20 bucks you know, there are videos on the channel that everything i'm showing you today on this video there's a video on the channel where you can go figure out how to do this kind of stuff look what we did we put d-rings all over the place to mount these things up ready to lay our straps on hold our cargo secure you know prevent it from sliding hitting us okay. that didn't cost very much for that kind of stuff you know look at our box here so you know Look at the storage now we have under here. You know, we put all that room in it and put your toolbox in there. You put your, oh, look, but yeah, you got to have a matching toe strap. Yeah, don't get caught without a matching toe strap. Okay, tools in there, camp stoves, those kinds of things. Very simple. This box right here didn't cost more than 30 bucks to make this. 30 bucks. So you can do that. Okay. You know, with the, a little work, weekends, evenings, you know, some parts of the, the world, that, uh, that like these Suzuki Sidekicks and Geo Trackers, you know, they have long winters. You can put this thing up in the garage and you can start doing a lot of projects indoors. 
you know the kids are going nuts you know you can't go anywhere in a lot of places so uh this could go up there this could be a winter project in the garage and then all these things that you've done and you can stand back and you can admire your work you know and look at that you've got something special that you made there is not another one like it it's yours and it's unique to you and that's what you got you know and here's yet another one look at that cb radio this one has a touch screen uh, stereo system in it with hands free so you can talk on your phone it has gauges in the back of it look at that it's got a gauge insert in it it's got heavy duty floor mats on it all the center console has been removed and repainted seat covers these are only like 20 bucks. They look good as hell. I like them. They're easy to wipe down. You got that. Door panels. Modified door panels with electric switches still in it. Cargo net. This is not just a cargo net. This is a bulkhead. This actually comes out and it goes across, goes across over here. When the seats are laid down, it becomes a bunk, a bed. Yeah, you can sleep in this thing. Look at that. A lock box. See this one? Got our speakers in it. Just like the other one. Look at this. A lock box. See? Put sensitive items in there. You know, maybe a rifle, some camera equipment, some things you don't want to get stolen. And back here. See? Look. Window decals to fit our windows perfectly. They don't have to be the American flag. They can be anything. There's a ton of resources out there. You can see our frame that we built you know, to make our bunk out of it and our bulkhead. Another mat here to slide stuff on top of it. It's all covered with felt, you know, that one. But this one, what we did different on this one is, well, look at that. It's got a whole damn kitchen in it. A whole kitchen. So, you know, oh, I'm sorry. With the sink. With the sink. Oop, see how that goes? Look at that. Sink, kitchen, storage, more storage, all kinds of stuff. See? There's a lot of different things you can do with these things. <laughs> a lot of fun toying around. Now, I will tell you, I am not real happy with this design. It's okay. But I think what would be better is if this actually folded down, became a table right here and worked that. And that way I could put another bench or fold down here, or I could put one of those cargo organizers here with pockets in it, those kinds of things. Look at more gun racks. <laughs> you just cannot have enough gun racks. I'm just, you know, I'm just without being said. So can't have enough gun racks. So there you go. You know, and when you get it all done on this one, the same thing. Stand back and you can admire it. There is not another one on the planet like this one. This one is mine. I built this one. I designed this one just like you're going to do with yours. Okay. Look, and this is not expensive. The most expensive thing on this, it's not a build. I hate to use that word term build, but the most expensive thing on this is going to be wheels and tires. And now they're a lot more expensive. Now I got, I got lucky and I find mine used on Craigslist. And, uh, uh, you know, figure out the bolt hole patterns you can find, five and five and a half. Old Jeeps are like that, some old Fords, some old Dodges. So there's a selection of wheels and tires that you could get, probably pretty reasonable. But that, that box we just showed you, less than $50. The camp stove, you know, you know, there's actually, I put links, Amazon links in all my videos that I'm doing a build on. So you'll be able to find these parts pretty cheap if you can't find them cheap someplace else. So, but we've got those there. There's videos on everything that we do here that we're showing you on these. And you can go through and figure out what you want to do. Or maybe just want a piece at a time. So that kind of stuff. But I will tell you this. It's certainly a lot better than paying eighty dollars to $100,000 for a new. That's just, that's just insane. Uh, just to go out there and, and beat around in the woods or in the hills or the mountains or the outdoors somewhere. You know, so anyway, there we go. So as you can see, after watching this video here, as we're about to wrap this up here a little bit, is that these things are just not that expensive to work on. And in today's high inflation and uncertain economies and stuff like that, people are trying to save a little bit more than they are spending, but they still want to get out. They want to go have a little fun. This is an alternative. I'm not saying that this is for everybody. Certainly not. You know, I enjoy it. I like doing things with my hands. I, I like solving puzzles and fixing things and solving problems, you know, and enhancing things and improving things. So, and that's what I do. And maybe you're the same, maybe you're not. But here's an option for you. And that's what this was about. So this affordable off-roading, and it's going to end with this right here. And that's the one, this video right here has been how to fix up your geo tracker or ways you can fix up your geo tracker. Or, hey, let's fix up a geo tracker. Okay, guys, listen. I want to thank you so much for watching this video, especially if you've made it to the end. 
uh, to see this last part. But what I want to kind of instill into you is that you really don't have to spend a hundred grand on a Jeep or a Bronco or, or Toyota, you know, uh, the Forerunners or the Land Cruisers or Range Rovers and those things to get out and have some fun. So I hope this series has done something for you. Uh, I hope um, you've learned something or has some entertainment value or something. And if you like it, and if you haven't already, it would be cool if you would subscribe. I think that would be awesome. But anyway, uh, this concludes the series. And next week, we're going to start on a new project. So I hope you enjoyed the show and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.